This film's supposed to take place in the very near future. It's incredibly heroic and brave of people to do this kind of work, but necessary if we're going to someday move some you know, part of the species off the planet. So it's incredible that, it, that it's happening. Hey there, Martian wannabes. Trace here for DNews. Thanks for tuning in. Science on TV and in movies has come a long way since we were sweeping for graviton radiation using the deflector dish and reversing the polarity only to discover disturbances in the force which caused wormholes in the antimatter beam to break subspace or whatever nonsense. But now Andy Weir's new book and upcoming Ridley Scott movie, The Martian, is making a huge splash for both scientists and science fans. In the film, Matt Damon's character astronaut Mark Watney is stranded on Mars and has to figure out how to survive on his own until he can be rescued, which could take years. Screenwriter Drew Goddard said he wanted it to be a love letter to science, and he totally nailed it. The science in the story is not only inspiring, but accurate. So accurate that NASA jumped on board with the movie right away. I went down to the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California to learn more about why even real space scientists are excited about this story. The Martian tells a really fabulous tale of the immediate future, a future we can see. And I don't mean you know, stranding an astronaut on Mars. I really mean the progress that we're making to actually have humans on Mars. This movie's all about uh, communication and the interaction with the people. You know, you don't see the laser fights, you know, and there's not robots running around killing people. You know, you don't need that for, for creating an environment of tremendous excitement. It makes it real. The book was packed with show your work style science, which made NASA really happy. The fantastic technology of ion drives, which we have talked about here on DNews before, are a big part of the story for the crew who left Watney behind. These are necessary to be able to take cargo to Mars, you know, 10 ton at a shot, land it down on Mars, the habitats and the Mars ascent vehicle. All those pieces of equipment have to be hauled back and forth to Earth using ion engines, and we're developing those things right now. The larger story, though, and one NASA is laser-focused on, is the viability of human survival on Mars. Both the book and the film bring this idea much closer to reality. When it comes to Mars, what is it about Mars that fascinates people so much? I think it's because it's the next obvious step for human exploration. We've been to the moon, Mars is the next place to go. That said, of course, it's still an unforgiving environment with no sustainability for human life. It's cold, there is almost no atmosphere. And did I mention cold? Because it's really cold. Negative 100 Fahrenheit on the equator at night. Almost double that if you go to the poles. On top of that, Martian soil doesn't have bacteria, nitrogen, phosphorus, or sulfur. All that is needed to grow plants here at home. Of course, in the story, Mark Watney figures out how to grow food and survive on Mars, which is based all on real science. A 2014 PLOS One study found that Martian soil, which is called regolith, could sustain Earth's crops for 50 days without extra nutrients. You could almost think of this story as an instructional manual for humans' eventual trip to Mars albeit still a fictional one. So what's really exciting about the movie is it gives us an opportunity to tell the public what we're really doing about our journey to Mars, and we're doing a lot. We also have mock-ups of the habitats, that, what they would look like on the surface. We also have mock-ups of the vehicles and have tested a variety of things. And so those elements that are in the movie are indeed because NASA is already starting to develop those. The biggest thing that they didn't address in the story was Watney's isolation. NASA knows we are social creatures and that months alone in space is impossible for our brains to process. They've taken efforts to avoid that kind of scenario and put the best people in the ideal environment for long missions. A round trip to Mars could take two years or more. By studying group and individual dynamics on Earth and in space, the American Psychological Association found people work best in a mixed sex team, and when astronauts have a sense of humor and low levels of aggression and anger. Astronauts are pretty type A, and they're good at teamwork and collaboration. They're good at taking orders and being critiqued. In real life, the women and men who NASA selects for astronaut training are diamonds in the rough. In a NASA published book, The Psychology of Space Exploration, the authors call it the right stuff. And the Martian character, Mark Watney, has definitely got it. If anyone can survive the challenge of living alone on Mars, it's probably him. Would you want to go to Mars, though? Do you think you could survive alone there for months? Maybe you wouldn't be alone after all. Our friends at All Time Conspiracies wanted to find out if NASA has been lying and hiding aliens from us. Check out this video to see what they found. The low quality of these videos has drawn criticism from scientists and ufologists alike. Nigel Watson, author of the UFO Investigations Manual, 
warns that the images suggested to be UFOs could actually just be specks of dust. There's a link in the description as well if you are on mobile. Thanks for watching DNews today, everybody. Make sure you subscribe so you get all our videos every day, and we'll see you next time. People keep asking what my shirt says. This is what my shirt says.